think this is me being interviewed, but this is actually my doppelganger who I found and put on national news. You're a bit paler than you're looking like, but whatever. I'm running for mayor of London. So I've been running for London mayor, but it's time for us to take this campaign to the next level. We needed a manifesto, which is basically a published declaration. You already have a manifesto then your first video. It was like part one, tell Boris Johnson to shush. Part two, introduce, stop and serve. Also, I honestly can't tell if your stop and serve plan like if, if that's supposed to replace stop and search all the gallery because if you get rid of stop and search right murder rate is going to go back up and repeat surpass new york like it did when city can got rid of it a couple of years ago right if you get rid of stop and search london will become the place where there are the most amount of murders Or, what I think you might be doing is, you know, going up to people and trying to change their lives. These violent people, trying to get them to give up violence by getting them to pay a fiver for a five-star, but it's also a zero-star restaurant. Yeah, just get them to watch Harry Brown. That would do way better. But whatever. My intentions, motives, or views. So I started typing, typing something that I knew represented the people, represented the youth. I wrote policies that would make the world a better place, like shutting down McDonald's with broken McFlurry machines, renaming Big Ben to Big Ben Clock so it qualifies as a BBC, banning three quarter length trousers and making it punishable by death to anyone who wears them, and not forgetting the most important, bringing the price of the Freddo back down to 5p. My creation was a masterpiece and it was time for it to be posted to the world and the people loved it. Never has a manifesto represented the people as much as this one, but although millions had seen it on Twitter and Instagram, we needed to get it out to more people, but the question was, who? So you're dead serious about this Black Mirror thing, aren't you? You're not a real fan of Black Mirror. I'm just going to say it right now. You do not understand how Black Mirror works or what it stands for. out to us for an interview was BuzzFeed. Oh, hello. Would you even describe yourself as someone that's like politically engaged or politically active? Yeah. No one cares about BuzzFeed's views on politics. So to survive, BuzzFeed has to do those... Uh, this is genuinely one of their articles. Um, what cup of Starbucks coffee you would be based on your zodiac sign? Um, and I mean, BuzzFeed UK is shut down. So, I think, I'm pretty sure that girl that's interviewing you has an English accent. Young people aren't represented in politics. I didn't want to do this, but I felt like I had no choice. Is that final? I'm not gonna think comment about that. Moment of fine, I'll do it myself. How do you convey to the moment that this is something? Yeah, English accent. She's going to be in America, in California, probably for the last couple of years, ever since the BuzzFeed layoffs, right, during this interview, which means she has no right to be discussing British politics, because she has not been in Britain since Theresa May was Prime Minister. Same way that you had Michael Sheen on, it was either Good Morning Britain or, or Lorraine, Talking about like recent UK politics when he's been in America since 2019 because he was busy doing Prodigal Son. I'm taking it extremely seriously. I don't know how I can convey it to the voters any more so than right now. One sec, sorry. This is very bad timing. Let me just tell whoever's at the door to go away. We're currently in an interview. Please, um, leave. Thank you. 
Sorry, my apologies there. Um, yeah, no, we're, we're taking this um, extremely seriously. What would you say are the characteristics that make up the Lindsay Elgin? World domination. Uh, I think... He didn't say and NDL member. That isn't gram grammatically correct. He said an NDL member. I agree with something BuzzFeed said. Holy crap. Also, you are doing very similar stuff that Hitler did. <laughs> what are you, Camel Harris? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not Hitler. I'm trying to do good in this world. I'm not trying to kill people. I'm the first good person to want world domination. Bye. I am disgusted. I don't want, right. I I would like to believe that most most uh, dictators initially had good intentions, but eventually the power just got to their head and they became evil. Right. So if you're a uh, world domination. You're not going to be a good person. The power is going to go to your head. And you're going to become evil. You are going to become. The Joker. But your. Uh, Joker trap. Is going to be. Just that trap. And. Uh, before I resume the video. I'll give you a quote from Lord Acton. Do not kick me off the video, YouTube. Okay, good. Disgusted to my core. You know, I can't keep doing this. Yes, yeah, okay, I want world domination. That doesn't mean I'm a sadistic supreme leader. I am a supreme, even though I am a supreme leader. My spirit can't take being seen as some joke anymore. So I'm done. I'm not doing any more interviews because I'm a very serious man with a very serious plan. So I'm going to think of um, something else now. And the plan I've come up with is definitely serious. BuzzFeed called me Hitler, which makes me feel sick. This is my struggle. In fact, I'll just say it in German. This is Mein Kampf. And I can't allow myself to be at risk of being disrespected by the media again. I mean, they already got my name wrong on national TV. Let's see. Nims Ubunge. I mean, how did the BBC pronounce Nims' name? How is Nims' name actually pronounced? Louisa Porat. Same thing. Mandu Reed. Okay, that seems kind of obvious to me. And Brian Rose, that's definitely obvious. The fact they have the audacity to compare me to Hitler is where I draw the line. If they don't want to respect me, then I won't respect them. So it seems there's only one logical outcome, and that's fooling the media by finding my doppelganger. Doppelganger, a double of a living person. Basically, I got to find my lookalike, but luckily I've already found him. See, in October 2019, I got sent a random video of a guy in a uni lecture, and he just so happened to look just like me. After a long search on Instagram looking for this Donnie, so, uh, yeah, help me find him, please. We eventually found him. His name's Dominic, and we've been in contact ever since, waiting for the perfect moment to make a video together. And that perfect moment is now. All we had to do was call him. Hello, my long lost brother. How you doing? Hey, how's it going? How's it going? So, as you know, I'm running for London Mayor. I obviously can't be involved in all of these interviews because it just takes up too much time. So, I'm trying to train you to be me so we can just basically interchange between each other. Hey, no, no problem, no problem. Now, <laughs> who could you? Yeah. Well, that was surprisingly easy. Well, all that's left to do now was me. Meet my look like. Oh, no way! You know, this feels like one of those, like, man. long lost twin reunion things. That's oh, me! I see, I see. <laughs> Honest to God, I see now. <laughs> Two knickers in my car. <laughs> but it was time for things to get serious. We had a very important job to do. Dominic was going to be taking interviews for me, and if people were going to believe the switch, the first thing that had to be done was uh, change his clothing. Now, yes, we were wearing the same clothes, but there was still something missing. A beard, to be specific. I needed a wizard who could magically put a beard on this. 
our both of you could just shave. And but who could I find? So I've got HD cuts. Best barber in the business. See, HD Cuts isn't your average barber. Not only can he do the most dangerous skin fade I've ever seen, but he can also make you have facial hair from absolutely nothing. Don't ask me how, because I have no idea, but it must be some sort of witchcraft. But with that being done, my look... I'm going to assume that what he does is that he gets, like, his clippers or whatever, his electronic clippers. Obviously, they have, like, this way bet that stores them. Uh, stores, like, that's a hair, and he's... Maybe his clippers has like some sort of thing on it that it can just sort of stick those hairs anywhere you want them to. So if you wanted to, basically what I'm trying to say is that that beard that guy's wearing is his own head hair. Not the worst thing he could have done, to be honest. Like, was ready. <laughs> That's me. It's just a more attractive version of me. Make up upgraded. Because you know how you always say you're smarter than me? Yeah? Okay, so I'm just going to ask you a question. I want to see if... I don't we are Tech Talk. We are the best thing ever. Wait, hang on. You mind if I call you Nick? That's fine. Any Nick. Well, as I'm calling you Nick, I might as well call you Nico. So, Nico, basically, in these interviews, these people, they're going to try and make a joke out of you. They're going to try and take the seriousness away from your campaign. But I have faith in you because you are Nico Milana. But if you need my help, I'm going to be behind the computer with this whiteboard and I'll be giving... Um, I'm starting to think that Nico is gonna, just going to go insane. He's going to go postal. Because he just doesn't realise how contradictory he is. You know, he wants to be taken seriously, he wants to be taken as a joke. So... People are going to get fed up with him, he's going to go... Oh, where are you going? No, please... Ah. No, I need to take revenge. Bang, 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 bang. What are you gonna shut up, Nico? Just so I can be there and take you out first. The only thing that can go wrong here is you ruining my whole campaign. But there's no pressure, Nico, because I look at you, I see myself. Just a slightly more handsome version, which to me makes me feel very insecure. So with that being said, let's get these interviews underway. Any questions? I'm ready. That's Nico on the line. <laughs> That's my mate. Here we go. Good luck, my friend. I was expecting the glasses. First up, we have Tom Harwood. Now, Tom Harwood's a young Tory. He was a journalist for the Daily Telegraph, but now he's a political correspondent for GB News. But the question is, would he be able to tell the difference between me and Big Domenico? How extensive was his research? I suppose we will just dive straight into this. We've got very different audiences. Could you explain for us who you are and why your candidacy matters? First of all, I'm Nico Omelana. I love my audience. Your audience, on your hands, Tom may define them as schmucks. How the hell has this worked? This was meant to be one of my wilder ideas, because let's be real, his voice is completely different to mine, but this story is none the wiser. What's going on, Tom? Moving on to your manifesto. Because Tom, is, is Tom's higher-ups, what it just went, we got an interview with this guy, his name's Nico Omilama, uh, and this guy, he's just gone, oh, oh okay, and sets up the Zoom call. My point being, this guy has no idea who you are. That's why you're getting away with it. Which you've referred to quite a lot. You say that you want to freeze the River Thames. How are you going to do that? One of my favourite movie star friends is Elsa, and she's not afraid to let it snow, personally. And if that fails, we'll get Mr Freeze. Another manifesto promise of yours is that you'll deport the EDL. Why are you not deporting a larger proto-fascist group like Britain First? I have a personal confliction with the EDL. EDL versus NDL. But you'll keep Britain First in London and in the country. A larger proto-fascist group. So you want to kick out these people who may be racist but their leader isn't. But you want to keep these people who are genuinely racist. Yes. Do you see a problem with that? No. Why not? Than the EDL. When did I say that? This schmuck is literally putting words into my...
But you'll keep Britain first in London and in the country, a larger proto-fascist group than the EDL. When did I say that? This schmuck is literally putting words into my mouth. Well, Dom's mouth. He knows I'm not trying to say that. Yeah, he's pushing for it anyways because he's trying to make me look like a fool. And trust me, he really... Well, then answer the question. Like, just what is your opinion on Britain first? Capitalised on the opportunity to make me look stupid. Here's some of the quotes he got Dom to say. So you couldn't have any automated trains on the network? So we could automate the elderly and the pregnant women instead then. Have you seen the videos of him drinking pee? Um, he sent them to me before. He's a weird child. But if you're going to be racist, please do it right. So we can get rid of you right. once and for all. I just want to say I don't condone anything my lookalike saying and at this point I was just trying to make sure he kept his answers as brief as possible. You have proposed a 6.9% hike in the minimum wage. Making businesses pay more for their labour might mean that there are fewer jobs, particularly at a time when businesses don't have all that much money after the deepest recession we've ever experienced. Shush. Excellent. He pronounced it wrong. How dare he pronounce it wrong? It's not shush, it's shush. On that note, Nico, thank you very much for joining me today. Anytime. Cracking. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> That's not iconic. I don't know what is, man. He thinks he's got some golden interview where he's made, it, made us crumble. <laughs> but three days after this, Tom Harwood ended up figuring the whole thing out. He tweeted warning his journalist friends about me, and he said that supposedly he figured it out straight after the interview. This would be fair enough, except for the fact it's a complete lie. See, I caught you in 4K Ultra HD, Tom Harwood. You literally tweeted about our interview, and then you deleted it because your followers told you it wasn't the real me. Unlucky Tom, mate. Better luck next time. But unfortunately, not all of our stunts were so successful. One journalist from Radio Bremen could somehow spot the difference between two completely different people. Hello. My first question, of course, is your manifesto, like yesterday you published it. Can you name like a top three you are staying with the most for? The renaming of Big Ben, calling Big Ben Clock. Would just be at this point he started waffling on about the same answer for what felt like about five years so we needed to do a quick switch and get me in there sorry um basically what what i want to um what i want to talk about uh is obviously the big bang turning into big bang clock so do you not realize that you are very paler than the other guy like if, if I do an interview, uh, turn off my camera, maybe even just go like that, and all of a sudden I come out in blackface, go like, you know, I'm, 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 hi, I'm a different person. You know it's going to be me. I'm point man. But you are making it very obvious, right? Why do you not see that you are a different skin color to the older guy? What's his name? Dom? Dominic? I have to ask, like, the first guy, who was it? What? It was me, Mickey Omelana. This is not your voice. <laughs> I want to talk about politics for young people. Like you said, why is it important? Maybe, can you explain this? That one question, I was already tired of this interview. Can you explain this? <laughs> Fundamentally, the system doesn't support them. Now, as we'd been caught out at this point, we just decided to completely lose the plot. Can we change again? <laughs> it's fine. It's me, Nico Romalana. Any questions, I'm here to answer. I swear to God, if that's TikTok. Maybe it's just the internet being bad right now. Because I'm in the midst of uploading a one R video. Download a free audio book with your 30 day trial. I can't do this. You can do it. Just talk to me. Do it for the nation. Interview me. <laughs> Let's talk about the polls. Like you already got 5% a lot. How did you do it? Well, the people wanted to be heard. 
they want it to be listened to, and I feel like finally they have that in me. Yeah, this whole interview's gone a bit wild. I'm sorry, Radio Bremen, but we still had one huge journalist to go. Nico, hello, mate. Finally, we have Owen Jones, a very experienced journalist. He writes a column for The Guardian currently, and he used to work for The Independent. But after many years of being a journalist, he was finally able to get his big brain speaking to my lookalike. Before I ask about your proposals for London, can I ask about... The gentleman behind you. Now, I was shook because I thought I'd been caught out immediately, but in reality, it was much, much worse. Now, here's the point where Owen Jones, this is going to go all Peter Quinn on us. If this interview was IRL, he would just, you know, uh, where's the real Nico? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> because the, the man is just crazy. Right. I, I think he's gay. Um, because, like, he was on Sky News talking about the Orlando nightclub shooting back in, like, 2017, I think. Um, and obviously he was, he was condemning it. He was saying that it was a bad thing. And he was talking with two people who worked for Sky News who agreed with him. But they agreed differently. You know, for different reasons. Um, one of the Skynet's girls would say, like, uh, obviously this man is a lunatic. He goes, lunatic? Why, why would you say that? Like, he does not support the nightclub shooting, but he's still defending the nightclub shooter. Saying that he's not a lunatic. Um... Yes. Also, another thing... Um, I'll show you a photo, maybe, but he was caught looking up. He wasn't actually caught looking up porn, but he has a very uh weird stains on his laptop that makes it look like he was watching porn. Uh, you'll understand when I show you the photos later. Owen Jones had noticed a picture of known terrorist Osama Bin Laden on my wall and I had no faith in Domenico to pull through. Over here, we have my uncle. Um, uncle. Uncle. Osama. Yeah, okay. But here we have my other uncle, Baron. So, yeah. I take both their ideologies together and put it into my politics. That's quite a claim. He just said that I'm taking a literal terrorist ideologies. This guy has gone mad with power. How the hell could you get out of this? How would you combine Barack Obama and Osama bin Laden? Uh, it's simple. They both kill people. There's, there's photos that were being sent around called campuses. Um, of like, I, I think it was ACE. Uh, <clears throat> detention centers, right? And the the conditions in the centers are terrible. Similar in all the college campuses and people going, is is that a concentration camp? And then finally turn and go, uh, no, that was an ICE detention center that was built under Obama. They are some obvious differences between the two. So how do you synthesize them? I'm also really confused with your question. Who is Bin Laden? I, I'm, I don't know who he is. Oh, I see, okay. So what would you first, do you think, your big two policies? Quite a few of the policies are quite important. Boris does need to shush. And I believe, possibly, so does your cat. He's a bit uppity today, I have to say. So, he's staring at you right down the camera. What would you say to this little mob to get him to go and cast his, his ballot for you? <laughs> Just gonna have to be quiet, aren't you, I'm afraid? That's, that's one of now the core... Ah, po- oh, well, Owen has found his new, uh... He's found his new jihadi cause. Marcus was talking about Owen talking about the nightclub shooting. Uh, calling him a terrorist and all. Like, shows a photo of one going, If you see this man with bath bombs strapped to him and glitter, you better run. Now he's ready to die for the NDL cause.
Of a mayoral candidate. I couldn't handle it anymore, so I had to get him out of there. So I knocked on the door and waited for the switch around. Even Owen Jones was finding this interview painful. Just look at his face. But the question is, was he going to notice a completely different person walking in front of him? My apologies. Who, who, was, who was at the door? Yeah, I was just one of my friends in the house. To be honest, originally I couldn't contain my shock at the fact this was working. He completely overlooked the fact I was a different person with a different voice. But then I started to find my groove. Uh, another thing which resonates with me strongly as this entire interview I've just been speaking, what resonates with me, McDonald's, the moment they break a McFlurry machine, we just shut it down and allow it to be low rent housing for young people. Thank you so much for joining me, Nico. It's been a real... Ride. And this is the bit that makes me die. At this point, clearly a member of his team texted him and said that there was a doppelganger and the pure shock in his face as he's trying to figure it out is priceless. It's been... It, it, it's been... Uh, it's been a real ride. And now I've just realised that... Um, yeah, Owen Jones is a, is a pretty bad liar. Because if, if it were me, I'm not... Like, if it were me, I'd be like, uh, oh, thank, thanks so much for having you, Nico. Uh, let me just check what time it is. You know, like, I've noticed my phone go off, and I would just sort of make an excuse to look at my phone. Um, hold on, what, what, what time is it? Uh, say whatever time it is, and go... Um, so, the entire time... I knew it wasn't. I I knew that it wasn't you. Um. And then Owen obviously says, "Yeah, I, I just figured it out instead of my team." <clears throat> you are. There was a doppelganger issue there, wasn't there? Poor Owen was so confused. I needed to explain it to him. Being a London mayor, I need to be in many places at different times. So I'm just training my second Nico to do the same thing. The issue which we have right now is I don't think he really knows what I'm standing for. Hence the Osama Bin Laden. Um. <laughs> Thank you both very much. I will be taking myself and what remains my dignity out of this interview. So appreciate it. Appreciate it, my friend. Thank you. But all I've learned is Dominico is a huge risk to our campaign and needed to be kicked out. Kicked out of the house entirely. But that leaves us with one final message. One final push. The end the have come together in their masses for this campaign and I'm super grateful but let's keep it going. Push the NDL in YouTube streams, comments to your families, on your ballot papers at the start they didn't want to take us seriously but now's our chance to make an impact because on May 6th it's election day. It's about to come to an end my friends. Let's end it right. Peace out. see the full manifesto then follow me on instagram uh it's coming up uh you better murder your whole family steal their all their identities and use their identities to vote for me also i can see the fact that says third there will head to the polls to elect our next mayor. It's going to be quite a contest with the prize, the most important job in London. Nico Omolana is the youngest standing to be mayor. YouTube star Nico Omolana. The youngest candidate. Independent candidate Nico Omolana. Should people be putting their vote to a YouTuber who's 23 and maybe hasn't got as much experience of life as others? This is a big, big job in British politics. A person who is elected will be managing a budget of more than £17 billion pounds a year. What do you think about Nicole Milan is trying to become London mayor. Not got a chance. Well, does he know anything about politics? Making politics a game. Realistically, you're not going to win. It is a disgrace that you're running for mayor, isn't it? We're just a bit of a joke. This sort of dangerous elephant. So, how about you go ahead and introduce yourself? My name's Nicole Milana, known internet troll and supreme leader. He even met his troll. Of the Nico Defence League. The 
Mundial is the Nico Defence League. Uh, basically, a few years ago, I trolled a racist group called the English Defence League. So you really are a schmuck, uh, I think. Uh, and they took your teeth as well. Yeah, they did. Which ended up getting me countless death threats. And one of their members told me that I'd never be as big as their group. So we went ahead and made the Nico Defence League. I've started the Nico Defence League. Join now. And blew them out of the water. And now, me and the NDL. Yeah, but here's the thing. There are going to be races in your group as well. Uh, because, right, Tommy Robinson is no longer the leader of, of the EDL, but he was the founder, right? And Tommy Robinson, despite what the media says, is not a racist. So, any race, any racist people that is in the EDL at the time of Tommy being leader is not recognized as, as a proper member of the EDL. Same way that if a Christian commits a terrorist attack, their church are not going to recognize them as a real Christian. <clears throat> so, since you are going to treat the English Defence League as a racist group, because there are racists within that group, I am going to treat the NDL as a racist group because there are going to be people in that group that are racist. Just ran for London Mayor. I'm running for Mayor of London. You're looking at the future Mayor of London. Vote for Nico. Thank you. Nico for Mayor. So why are you running? Because young people are represented in politics. Why they're not voting is not feeling represented by politicians. Younger people don't turn out to vote. Young people are actually engaged with issues that they know about, but politicians currently aren't engaging them. I wanted to show that we can really make waves and shake things up in the political space, and at the very least show that young people will go out and vote when they're really behind something, and hopefully persuade these major parties to try harder to represent young people in future. Otherwise, they're just proven that they're pussies. So who did you actually run against? Well, there was a lot of people. This was a record-breaking year. More people ran this year for London Mayor than ever before. But let's start. There's the top four parties. Let's call them the Untouchables. That's Labour, Conservatives. You know, because because that movie, that movie, starring that guy, that movie, I, I haven't seen it. That, you know, uh, from that year I wasn't born in. Um... Let me just Google it. Uh, 1987, starring Sean Connery. Uh, I think it sounds a bit familiar. Uh... Oh, he's that guy from James Bond, yeah. He's, uh, he's the one that Pierce Brosnan kills. Um... You're making me start to feel like Uncle Rock is here, right? I'm younger than you. And I just hate this. Young people are oppressed. Narrative you have, because young people are not oppressed. Old people are oppressed. And by old people, I'm talking anyone over the age of 25. You're 23, right? And as I said yesterday, it's going to get to the point where people are going to be too scared to be an old and kill themselves at the age of 25. And you're probably going to be the first one to do it. Green Party, Lib Dems, they all have huge funding. Like, hold on. The Tories and Labour, fine. But the Green Party and the Lib Dems, no chance. No one likes the Lib Dems or the Green Party. And it's going to be either Labour or Conservatives. I'm going to assume it's Labour because I think I would have heard if ZD Khan was getting kicked out. They've been established for many, many years. Then I'd say there's the villains. There's Lawrence Fox, a man who had £5 million in budget for his whole campaign. And he's all around a questionable person. There's Brian Rose who had billboards across London for... Now, yeah, you put up evidence in the video, but you didn't actually say any evidence in the interview. Months, you couldn't go anywhere without seeing his face, and he also 
drank his own urine and he began Right, drank his own urine. Mm, that doesn't really say it kind of does say much of a little bit of what he is like as a person, but it doesn't make him any less of a good candidate. And also, seeing his face everywhere also does not make him a bad candidate. The man who ran for the UKIP party do have heavy links to racism within their ranks. Ah, uh, Carl Benjamin. Yeah, right. Here we go, a person that I know. Obviously not personally, but, you know, he's... I'm a big fan of him. And he's not racist. I have never heard of this racist video. I'm going to look it up right now. I bet, yeah, it's not going to be racist. But, like, I, I know of the I wouldn't rape you thing, right? And then people throwing milkshakes in his face and then Joe Brown being like, people were throwing milkshakes in his face. Personally, I think they should have thrown battery acid. Joe Brown looks and sounds like that. Girl from Monsters Inc., the one that's always watching Mike Wazowski. Right, so I found a Sky News report on it, or Sky News video. For one, I didn't watch the whole video, it's on for four minutes, 30 seconds. I only watched them in 16 seconds, but it seemed a little longer. One, they say that they, the way they describe what happened of Carl joining UKIP is like they said, right, we need uh, an online guy to be the face of the party. Not true. Carl and Marcus joined UKIP because they were the only party to the only like party that, that's a household name at this point that had freedom of speech in their manifesto. Hold on. Like the only alternative was conservatives. But the Conservatives right now are crap. They've been for years. Um, the second thing is that supposedly the racism comes from one of his YouTube videos because Carl was a YouTuber. Or he still is a YouTuber. He goes by the name Sargon of Akkad online, right? Started up one of the videos in, in 2013. So far, I'm I'm watching his videos in order. I haven't watched any of his videos since, like, the remaster of Destroy All Humans came out over a year ago. But he started off as just, like, when he was talking, he would have, like, a photo of Sargon of Akkad in black and white, and then eventually he switched it over to a more golden statue of him. And it's during the golden statue phase or era, whatever the hell you want to call it, that he... Supposedly called a disabled person a retard. I haven't got to the part in his videos where he starts using the gold statue because the man has uploaded a lot of videos. Um. So obviously I can't comment on that. And even if I have seen the video, it would have just bored him with the other videos. But what I can tell you is that I don't know about what he was like then. But at the very start of his channel, he was a very angry person. All his videos would end with him being really angry, saying something that would just be the end. Be like, whoa, what? It's already over. Um, so, it says racism, and I, he has used the N-word. But the context, from what I remember... Is that he was talking about someone else saying the N word. Just instead of saying. Said the N word. He said said. Um, because it's faster. And it's easier to understand. Um, as for him calling the disabled person a retard. Yeah. The retard isn't really the. I guess. I don't know if the disabled person was physically disabled or mentally disabled. He was mentally disabled, I understand, but if the guy was physically disabled, that's not the slur for physically disabled people. The slur for physically disabled people is cripple. So, if, if he called a physically disabled person a retard, 
that wasn't a slur against him. You call me an you, if you call me the N word, that's not a slur against me because I'm not black. Anyway. So a good bunch. And anyone else? Well, a Ben Ran and another YouTuber as well. And obviously me, Nicole Milana. Did anybody think I could win? No. Did anybody think I could make any waves at all? Definitely not. But history will have to be our guide here on whether any big breakthrough uh, is likely. Back in 2016, the top five candidates, the candidates from the top five parties, got nearly 94% of the vote. This is a really hard mould to crack. There were 20 candidates in total, and I was joint bottom favourite to win. I think my odds were at like 500 to 1, so they really gave us no chance of getting anywhere, and it became personal with me, because little did they know We've been planning this for a very long time. I didn't want to ever say it because I didn't know if he was going to say it, but I actually knew he was going to run for mayor back then. Nico actually told us that he was going to run for prime minister. No, it was it was always met. When did he tell us that? Because he's doing it oh, now. Miami. That, that was when we were in Miami. It was a year ago. Obviously, if I was going to do this, I had to be myself. Uh, and the best way to do that was launching the whole campaign in the most stupid way possible. And the idea which I actually came up with was walking out in my announcement video in a suit jacket, tech loose bottoms, and an iron shirt football boots and children's glasses while simultaneously saying I'm taking it extremely seriously yeah no it's the best way but I no it doesn't what I'm gathering from this is that you're uh, bipolar out you're polarizing you're polarizing opinions on yourself you're conflicting opinions on yourself were intentional, which let's just say they are. And we just rewind the video because I had some, but I've, I've lost it. <coughs> oh, I, I, I have it now. Damn. Wild. While simultaneously saying, I'm taking it extremely seriously. Smosh made a video years ago of like, if teenagers ran the world and I feel like that's what you want no bad idea right to become president you need to be at least 35 years old and we need to keep it like that yeah no it's the best way but I had no idea how much it was going to take off no clue. And after this, social media went wild. Everyone was talking about it and the people were supporting me. But somehow, with all this attention we were getting on social media, everyone tweeting it out, some of the biggest names in the UK, no media were reaching out at all. So we needed to figure out a way of getting that. So Except the media were reaching out. The BBC emailed you asking for an interview and you ignored them. And then when the BBC said, we emailed you for an interview, you still said, oh, uh, they were dodging me. Took advantage of the power the NDL have on social media and directed it directly towards the BBC, um, demanding an interview. I, I did not leave. I know, I was there with you. Yeah, we did, we did not leave until we got it. <laughs> From one BBC to another, make the right choice and interview me. And surprise, surprise, we got the interview. We believed the BBC inter interviewing us and we use that as an opportunity to launch the first point. Did, did he just say that he he bullied the BBC? Is he is he admitting to being a bully? And interview me. And surprise surprise we use that as an opportunity to launch the first point in our manifesto. Helen Boris Johnson. Shush. We then got a London bus and turned it into a restaurant where we promoted the Yeah screw it. But I mean, he's meant he's being a bully. Why, why would you vote for a bully to be the mayor of London? Forefront project who helps steer young people away from crime. We found my whole doppelganger and uh, used them to prank the media uh, and help launch our full manifesto, which included supporting the EDL, shutting down any McDonald's with a broken McFlurry machine, and turning. Yeah, but what are you gonna do about Britain first? I'm going to need to go all Jamie McDonald on you. Um, I'm trying to think of that scene where he, where he 
Two was like. Oh, all right, all right, all right, I got it now. I'll only just think of an insult. Hold on. Oi, trackies. What are you going to do about them? What? Answer the question. What are you going to do about them? He can't answer the question if he doesn't know what it is. You said you're going to deport the EDL, but you did not say what you're going to do about Britain first. You get the point. Into low rent housing, freezing the River Thames so people could ice skate over it, and bringing the price of the Freddo back down to 5p. And now, although the manifesto was a massive joke, what we tried to do was have good heart behind the message of the manifesto. Um, so solely standing up for issues that actually do need to be solved as well. Now, as popular as the manifesto was on social media, there were some people who actually ended up having issues with it. Freezing over the Thames, I think, yeah. telling Boris yeah. Johnson to shush. Happen. Really? Will it actually happen? How, do you have sort of superpowers? No, no, I don't have superpowers, but luckily some of my friends do. So I am actually in good friends with Elsa from um, Frozen, and she will freeze the River Thames. How can voters take you seriously with those sorts of um, claims? Realistically, you're not going to win. Isn't it all just a bit of a joke? No. What would you say on characteristics that make up an NDL member? World domination. Hitler had similar ideas. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No. Pussies. The pussies had issues with it, and he made them crumble. I was in the script. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I wanted this manifesto to be everywhere. Social media wasn't enough. I wanted it to be on billboards. Now that just sounds like a stupid idea, but somehow we managed to make it happen. This is a big moment, George. First time on a billboard. We gotta look out for it. There it is. It's right in front of us. Oh no way! Oh my gosh! Make transport free for under 18s and over 69s. Uni students included. Let's go. Nick He did not say senior citizens, right? Over 69s because I have funny. I, I I can sympathize with some of the stuff he's saying sometimes. But the thing is that like something like you know bringing the Fredo down to 5p there's going to have to be stuff to do with like inflation and all. Plus, it's what the shops decide to sell it as. A shop could say, you know, Fredo might say like 25p on it, but the shop would sell it for 50p. I'm pretty sure my little Russell's sells a Fredo for 50p or 75p. Um, <laughs> so, and, uh, like, just, Running the world funnily, right? Make, making all that stuff free, good intentions and all, could be a good idea, probably. But doing it funnily, it's what is what is going to kill you, right? 69 is not senior citizen age, right? I think you become a senior citizen or classified as a senior citizen when you retire, which I think is 65. Currently, right? So, a senior citizen has to wait four years before it to become free. Go for mayor! That's me! And it was on billboard to billboard to billboard to billboard to billboard to billboard. I don't even know how many billboards there are. You know, so say billboard to billboard to billboard, that's all you need to do is say it over and over again. But, um, yeah, and it was nuts. I remember going to Leicester Square when I was just a kid and trying to be like all the YouTubers at the time, just trying to be like them, basically trying to replicate their videos. So it was nuts going to actual Leicester Square and being on a billboard just up there. It was definitely like a, a life moment. Oh, add a second eye to the London Eye so it becomes the London Eyes. Inspirational. Sound of the underground, my friends on a billboard. Uh, but we... We took advantage uh, of being there and we were trying to uh, use that as a campaigning opportunity and speaking to the people. I had a second eye to the London Eye. Yeah. You're going to vote for me? You're on there, eh? Yeah, yeah. I've got your vote. Good 
Thank you. Oh, yeah, it's old. Who are you, man? Me, I'm 39. 39? Oh, you're yeah. really young. No, you're looking on like 20. Yeah. No, it's, yeah, a, it's a face cream I use. You look really young. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The billboards were sick, but what really ended up blowing me away was all the people who went down to see them. Like, the NDL came out in their masses. Like, it was the first opportunity which I really gave the public. Yeah, don't, don't confuse the people with the NDL. The NDL are part of the people, but the people aren't part of the NDL, right? Because if you say people came down to see it, it makes sense that it's just a bunch of random people came down to see your sign, but no, it's a bunch of people that are part of your weak cult that wanted to see your sign because they're such a big fan of you and they wanted to meet you and all. Like, I don't like it when people consider YouTubers as their as the person they want to meet. Like, if I saw a YouTuber right in the street, if, if I saw, like, Felix Shelberg right in the street, you know, like, over 100 million subscribers, I'd be like, eh, cringe man. E even if I, like, I don't like him, but if I like them, I'm like, oh, oh my god. Um, But if I had no opinion, I'd be like, Mm, whatever. He's not a celebrity. Like, for me, someone I'd really want to meet is probably... Like, J.K. Simmons. Because he's a voice of my... He's a voice of everyone's childhood. Um... Yeah. To support the campaign and show their support. Um, so seeing everyone sending in their videos, it really was insane. and better ways to campaign to reach more people. So, how did you do that? Well, I never thought in my YouTube career we'd be renting a boat. Is this our boat? Oh, that's our boat. We've got a boat. <laughs> <laughs> campaign is ridiculous, man. This is dumb. We did all of our campaigning to that point on the ground. So it was only right to take it to the water. And on the boat, we had threados for 5p on the side. So anyone seeing it would have just been like, what the hell is going on? But yeah, I know we got mariachi band as well, just playing. Bring it on, press it Bring it it on, press is currently being constructed into Big Ben Clock, a real BBC. They're already making my changes happen. This is what I like. The London Eye. Crazy to think when I'm mayor, there's going to be two of these. The London Eye will become the London Eyes, so London has more vision. And George is literally running around the whole city like a, like a madman, out of breath, uh, trying to catch up with us. We have people watching us on the bridges, just looking at this. But why? Like, if the way you're, you're describing what he did was he, that he's just running, running through London trying to catch up with the boat. But if that's all he's doing, he's not really accomplishing anything for your cause. So, why did you just get him out to needlessly uh, run a marathon? Which boat? Let's go, Nico Defense League. That's what I'm saying. Big up. We're catching the people's eyes. And I'll tell you why. Because we're giving them a message which they can connect to. Fredo prices are too expensive. It's robbery, daylight robbery, how they've gone up so much. And that's why we have to fix it. And our final movement was uh, going past City Hall, the place which I'd actually be crowned as mayor. That's where the like, results end up happening.
tonight, it's the final furlong, just 48 hours till Londoners go to the polls. The mayoral candidates make their final push for votes. The more we campaigned and the, the longer the election went on, the more ridiculous things got. Like two guys turned up at the house with a whole painting of me, like a mural. I was thinking, what the hell is this? I don't know. I'll be back, I'm um, at the house, but we're right large. Hold on, I'm going to have to talk while I clean my controller because my brother was in here. And obviously he just doesn't care because not his controller. Like if you if you've seen that video, I think it was for the dust off thing, uh hit free hit free hit free. Where he like gets a like uh nacho cheese sauce and all and crisps and all and just intentionally puts it all down his keyboard. That's what my brother's like. He's not doing it on purpose, he's just Extremely lazy and extremely fine. I know that's hypocritical come from me, but uh, like I don't eat a lot of greasy food. And I'm, I'm not lazy. Um, also another couple of things I want to get off my chest. Well, well again, I don't think that was the right thing to say, but uh, I'm not going to sit down for the rest of this video. Uh, in the chair, and actually the face cam is like obsolete because of that. Because one, I can't be bothered, and two, Nico doesn't even deserve it. Um, another thing is that I thought that Nico was. I I don't even remember what I thought he was. I I assumed sort of posh would have been like. Uh, I I ran for. The London Mayor and and it it was a fantastic experience. I learned a lot about myself and but instead as this uh absolute rude man calling United Lads, uh, I ran for mayor, yeah. Um I'm a cool guy. Um oh crap, I need to turn the volume down on this. There you go. Stuff like that, but whatever. That's not crazy enough. Someone turned up with a car. Also, another thing, he has literally a minute, at least twice, that this isn't a real interview. <clears throat> anyway. Customized car. Oh my god, what is going on outside? What? Oh my god. Oh my god. This is the police. You're under arrest for 12 counts of pedophilia. Live in real life. <laughs> At this point, heads were turning. My odds went ten times lower in the bookies, and people were seeing me as a legitimate candidate, which got us the opportunity to speak to ITV News. Now, obviously, I was skeptical because I didn't know how they were going to portray me. But at the same time, it's ITV. You've almost got to talk to them. So I had no choice but. There's nothing really special about ITV News, but whatever. Double down. All right, even general. Paul Milana, supreme leader of the Nico Defence League. I'm going to make you pay. At 23, Nico Omolana is the youngest standing to be mayor. I feel like someone had to stand up and tell the big man Boris, shush, someone needs to do that. And also, someone needs to employ more police, put them straight into the Houses of Parliament, because that's where all the real criminals are. Should people be putting their vote to a YouTuber who's 23 and maybe hasn't got as much experience of life as others? Yes, because I'm the only honest one of the lot. The one thing I needed ITV to realise was I was the most serious candidate. And I think I did that in two words. Two days left of campaigning. Can they get their message into two words? Creating equality. Restoring hope. Independent voice. For vibes. Bang! Right there was my whole campaign marketing done. Those two words. Ah, sheesh. Bro, bro. You are like, I I can't even try and do like a I was trying to do like a sort of Reddit thing like you know that guy on TikTok it's like a uh, a uh, POV the Reddit kid um th there was there was some guy like hold on oh sorry I was just playing Pokemon Go. <gasps> Hold up. Ding, 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 ding. Are you playing Pokemon Go as well? A fellow gamer? P Pug! I can't believe this is... 
You use TikTok? Obviously, that video is like quite outdated, so I'm gonna try and uh, update it. Whoa, this politician is a YouTuber and he's so young. Sheesh! Hold up. Wing ding 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 ding. This guy is like so poggers. He wants to tell this guy that I've never heard of, despite the fact that he's the prime minister of our entire country. To shush.